for the news in seven minutes. She would, yeah. She uh, would, uh, uh, with with uh, uh, jo Joanne and Beth and Jay are talking about uh, uh, Barbara, and just after the the, uh, the funeral, and uh, when when Beth and Donna uh, informed the family who Mark's parents were, uh, it was a bombshell to the family, and Barbara was totally broken up and was crying and and w was wanting to know who was her parents. She felt that her mother was truly her mother, but she wasn't certain ab about who her father was, and she was broken up. And at the time, right after that, she was living with Bill and Joanne and really giving them trouble. And Joanne was telling something about this. And uh, uh, then the, the question was raised, how could Barbara with this, that sort of an attitude, ever, ever be successful in getting Jay Kunzler, the neat guy that he is, and uh, Joanne was going to talk about it. Well, I just remember the trouble she really gave, a lot of trouble, and, um, and, and I got to the point that I just, I finally said, Bill, she's your baby, you're going to have to handle, because I knew she was rejecting me totally, and I felt that our age was too close to that caused a problem. She did accept me as an authority. She accepted me as a sister-in-law that was a problem to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there were many, many nights that I would listen to Bill till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I would be in bed and I'd just be sitting there thinking, I hope Bill's going to be this patient with our girls when they bring these kind of problems to him. I did. Mm -hmm. I thought that a lot. And in fact, when he'd call into bed at night, I'd say, Bill, I hope that you will remember how patient you've been with your sister and you'll give your own daughters the same the same kind of treatment. Yeah. I remember telling you that. she played with fire. No, she did. And well. she started wanting to do things that, and I heard Bill say, now, Barbara, Mom wouldn't allow that. And she'd say, yes, she would. She'd let me, she'd start telling about, in, there was clothes with a big problem. <coughs> she wanted this formal and that formal and this dress and that dress. And, and she just, you know, and we didn't have the monies to buy it. The family didn't. At that time, the finances were really tight because of the accident and stuff. And, um, Bill kept saying, now, Barbara, I know that she wouldn't agree to that. Oh, yes, she would. She'd give me anything I want. And she carried on like that, you know. And Bill, I heard him say many times, well, she's a different mom than when I was home. I heard him say that lots of times. And he, you know, and she says, I don't care. Mom gave me whatever I wanted, you know. And she'd keep on like this. Then when she wanted to go to these overnight drinking parties, she did. That may be a shock to you guys, I but know. she did. And she'd say, well, they're going to be chaperones. The police are going to be there. And I'd hear Bill say, that's all the reason more why you won't go. She snuck out one night. I knew that. She snuck out, and Daddy and I knew she left. Bill and I knew she left. Do you think the, these, the, the, uh, this conduct was uh, a form of her rebellion against uh, yes, the family I, because I, of what happened? I, I think, think so. I yeah. think so because, like I said, I'll tell you a little bit, and then she wrote me later. And, you know, we sat up that night. We couldn't find her. Bill got up real quick. You know, we heard her get up and come up the stairs, and he was waiting to hear the door. He figured she'd come through the kitchen and the dining room and go out the front door. She sneaked right out the back door and must have gone over the fence. We don't know for sure. But we, we couldn't find We didn't hear her go out. We just heard her come up the stairs, but we never heard her go out. And we laid there for a while, and by that time, it was too late to find her. She was already out. We did, and she'd made arrangements with kids to meet, and this was probably about 11.30 at night. And we knew that that... that uh, Beer bust was going to be held somewhere, but we had no idea where. It was held clear out in Vernal, Utah. Clear out wow. in Vernal, Utah. We found that out later. And, you know, we spent the most miserable night. I bawled and bawled, and Bill says, what is What were you crying about? Because she'd left. Mm -hmm. And she was and, responsible. And I, we were responsible, and Bill kept saying, what is your mother going to say to me when she sees me? I mean, we just took the responsibility really heavily. Now, and this is after Mom was buried. Oh, yeah. Yeah. a long time And I was... Yeah, several months after. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, she... Um, after Bill, Bill was out of the hospital. Oh, long time. Bill had been working for a while yet. <laughs> they, I'm sure that we got her after the experience up at... No. I don't know whether it was after she'd been up at Florence Ruth or was before. But I'll tell you the, the time frame. Right after the accident, you know, that summer, we took Larry and Bernie and Don, my brother, and Bruce. And those four guys came and lived in our home that whole summer what? before they went on their missions. And then I had Joylene that fall. Jo okay. Joylene was born that November, and it was in the following uh, spring sometime the following year that we got Barbara. It was still in the school year. It was still in the school year because she was a senior that year. She was a senior. And she kept getting herself involved in school in certain activities that 
just wasn't really she good. Was, she was extremely popular. Very. She was extremely pretty. Very good. And she, she wanted to wear the spaghetti the strap uh, gown to the, I think it was Homecoming Queen or something, and that was a night that was just miserable for Bill and I. She had this little feeling. She insisted on it. Huh. She wore it, too. Right. And Bill kept fighting it. He says, that is not what you've been taught. And she kept insisting, Mother would give it to me. You yeah. know, and, and Bill kept saying, She's a different mom than when I was there. You know, I heard him say that so many times. Well, anyway, that night she snuck out. We, even at 5 o'clock in the morning, we were trying to find where she was without revealing to authorities or anybody who we were. Mm -hmm. Because the Packard was a popular family, a well-thought-of family in Bountiful, Utah. What were you trying to do, preserve the, uh, the, the, the name? The name. We were. <laughs> and by morning, say like 6 or 7 in the morning, I was so mad. <clears throat> And Bill was scared to death. I was mad that she would do such a thing. And you know, we had no idea what might be taking place. It turned out that the group of girls she drove out with, that were not good girls, they got lost. And they spent the whole night in the desert somewhere out there on a lonely road. They had no idea where they were. The coyotes were howling at night, and those kids were scared to death. When I heard it, I wanted to just laugh. She deserved every bit of it. She told me, she said she was scarier than she'd ever been in her whole life. I, they didn't have blankets to cover them. Heavenly Father just I all he played a plank <laughs> And she told us, David, she had to come to us and apologize to us. When morning came, those girls were scared girls. But they still had the gumption to... Find that stupid thing, and when she got, when they finally find got, what stupid thing? The beer the bat, the cager. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. When they got up there, and see, most all the kids down there were LDS. All of them in Bountiful, Utah were LDS. And a lot of And them when they got going up, out of beer bust. yes, oh, they still do it. <laughs> they still do it down in Utah. When they finally got to where that beer, when they finally found in the morning, when it's daylight, they finally found where that beer bust was. And Barbara told us when she finally came home that night, she was a repentant little girl. Let me tell you, she was. But she still kept giving us trouble after that. That was the thing that surprised me. Why, after having that experience and finally owning up that we were right, she still kept giving trouble. <laughs> she, they got up there and she found all these drunk guys and these girls living, sleeping with these yeah. guys, and they were still having their sexual stuff during the morning <laughs> and drinking. And when she came in on that, she Mormon was not, kids. Yes. Yeah. She was not the popular kids, the good kids, the leaders, sons and daughters. The leaders of the school as yes. well as the war. And it shocked her to death. And she wanted to leave right now. Well, those girls didn't want to go. She was stuck. Until finally somebody left and she just bummed her ass home. Did she tell you about any advances toward her? No, she didn't. I, she didn't say. She, she told us about she didn't story. have. She didn't have any advances made to her. She was scared to death. I mean, I think that... Anyone that would have approached her would have known instantly that this little girl wasn't going to go with that Well, girl. she was scared to death. She was scared to death. I think she feared for her life, to be honest with you. And well, she said it was just a mess seeing these bodies lie all over. And there were some tents, she said. But these bodies, and I guess some of them weren't completely dressed. And she, it was a shocking thing for her. And wow. she realized instantly that she'd made a bad choice. Yeah. And it was late the next afternoon before she came home. I tell you, it was a miserable weekend. It was just, and by that time, I said, Matt, and finally, again, I said, Bill, it's your baby. You're going to handle this. I wash my hands of the whole thing. And I said, I'm couldn't. sick and tired of this whole mess. And by that time, my physical body was being worn down quite a bit from a lot of things. You know, and the mental pressure that I'd had for so long, I was getting to the point that I was just about ready to, I was going to go to the I want to know why. You were so involved in it. Barbara, was uh, um, was she assigned to live, live with you and Bill? I'm trying to remember exactly. And where she were you at the time? She, we were living in Bountiful at 158, 650 North. Uh, <coughs> okay? And we had and two bedrooms upstairs and one bedroom downstairs. And, and, and Barbara was living in the downstairs. No, well, when we got her back, see, something had happened. She'd gotten in, had a big mess, and I think it was Farnsworth. She'd been living with Farnsworth. And I know it was. And there that, was such then a big was, Then Farnsworth uh, 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 episode was before. Yes, with you. and that's why we took her, because we got word back from Boise that Barbara and Farnsworth were really having problems and that there was bad feelings. And Bill instantly said, sweet, we're going to solve that problem. And I don't know exactly all the details now, Jay. It's been too long. All I know is the next thing was Barbara was in our home with all her belongings, and we went down the basement and 
Fix it all up for Barbara. Mm -hmm. Quickly tell me who's the who are the farms with? Well, they're and the why Barbara state to them? leaders in farms. Are they the ones that own the eggs? No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Someone no. in the he family, was, I think it was Bob, uh, either Bob or Bernie or Ben, knew them real well. Yeah, well, the whole Bob, family knew oh, them real well. Bob and Ben and Bernie Bob were young. Yeah. They're old people that mom and dad knew them. Mary Farnsworth yeah. was in the and state. And Farnsworth. They're, state they're, they're MIA, in and it. he was they're on the high council or something. Why did Barbara go to them? I did don't the remember. family ask Barbara to go to them? I no, no, no. can't remember. Why? Uh, it seems like the Farnsworth volunteered. Volunteered. Because they realized that there was such a, a shock for all this to happen, and these kids were around, and I, it seems to me like she volunteers offered to take her back with them or, or have her come and stay. I don't remember the details. I just know she the was there. The had a good name when they moved from Bountiful yeah. here. Yeah. And whether, uh, I don't remember. Yeah. I just know she came but up. But when she came And back, she came to us and had Christmas and yeah. and uh, such when she was staying at <coughs> And I think then it's when you started picking up that there was a problem. Oh, yes, I yeah. knew. Because, because the LRD was... was the same age. Yeah, I remember that. Barbara. And I think it's you who called and told us. Uh, Barbara told me that the, the whole episode there with the fine source was a real yeah. bomb out. It was. Yeah. And when she came to us, she was a really she militant, belligerent little girl. She was. And it surprised me. I wasn't ready for that. I, I Because when, when she left, she was just a sweet teenage girl that was just a normal little girl. Mm -hmm. and, she, and that's what I expected when she came back. And that's why I agreed to Bill. Because, see, you got to understand that I had taken care of Bill, then I took care of da Daddy Packard when he was completely bedridden, and I had to change sheets, top and bottom, wipe his body of all this, that, you know, I mean, and he was so embarrassed over that, and I was big and pregnant. Plus, I was taking care of Bill. Did you realize, and he'd probably be upset if I tell you, that Bill couldn't even wipe his own body when he went to the bathroom. I had to do that. He's still embarrassed by that. Well, Dad, too? Yes. Oh, okay. Dad, okay. Dad had no feeling. When he went to yeah, the bathroom, diapers it went Dad. all over. Even when we had the diapers on, all the yeah. time, it would ooze out over the diapers, and you could smell it, and you would go in there and lift the sheets off, Jay, and he'd be totally covered from waist down, and the sheet top and bottom was full of muck. Yeah. yeah and and so I had to clean him off. I mean, this happened more than once a day. I'd have to clean him off, roll him over, and pull the sheets out, and put new sheets out. I mean, and here I am being pregnant. And up until the week before Byron was born, I did that. And at that week, I was just getting so nervous and weak. And I was like, oh, I can't take this no more. i got to get away. And Byron was born a week later. Then it's when I think Beth came into play and he came and got to... No, they put him in a home. They put him in a home. They put him in a home. Then because Bill that. called Dee and he says, i got to make a change here. See? And then right after Byron was born, then we had these four boys come and live in our home. Okay? And then... Ma La La jo Jolene was born November 1, and then uh, right after Jolene was born in January, uh, Jolene became very ill. Bill got the pneumonia, and Byron got pneumonia. And Dr. Hicken came to our home and took care of those two guys and told me that he, that he would keep them at home because the hospitals were full and that I could probably do a better job at home. And now, see, you got to understand now, see, I've been through quite a bit here. <laughs> and I had Jolene, and then she got deathly ill. This is in about January, and we just got through with Bill. January, what year was it? Uh, she was born in 1958, and it was this January of 59. Okay. Okay, and I don't know if you remember this or not, Jay, but when uh, I took her to Dr. Hicken, and I, he would never tell me what she had. He never did. I think that he felt that I was ready to fall apart, and I was. And he said, Mrs. Packard, or Sister Packard, he called me, because he was the state president, and he says, take your little one home, and I'll be there tonight. And he came to our home, and he says, the hospitals are full. We'd have to stick her in the hall, which wouldn't be good for her problem. He said, uh, you put her in this bedroom, and you uh, keep the vaporizer going all the time, and I'll come every day. And he did. He never did tell me what's the problem. Never did. That room was vaporized so bad that the wallpaper peeled off and the, the hardwood floor peel, uh, uh, welted buckled. up, you know, buckled. And I just kept taking good care of him. He kept telling me, he says, you're doing as good a job as any nurse would do. And she's yeah, better yeah, off yeah. here. I think so. Probably a bad case of it. And by this time, I was just... And it was about the time, I think, the bar... The, um, um, 
Mm. Bern, uh, Bob and Talmadge were coming out to get married in the temple, and Bob had written us quite a few letters. He corresponded us quite a bit, so we were trying to help that situation. And they, and that, it was a Friday night. Bob and Talmadge arrived. You came because there's going to be that, and our house is... Wait a minute. She came because there's going to be what? A wedding. wedding. The next we morning to Bob. Bob and Talmadge is Okay. Came. And unbeknown to me, my parents came that night. Do you remember that? My parents came in that night, and I didn't expect them. And I was trying to handle all this traffic going in and out and taking care of that little baby. And I guess I wasn't myself. Are you recording it? Record it. I, I guess I wasn't myself. And after all the company left, I sat down to talk with Mom and Dad. And I just kind of, you know. Let loose? I just gave a big sigh, and uh, my Mom and Dad looked at me, and uh, they said, uh, we're not going to stay. <laughs> and I saw that. Because I wanted her to stay. And I begged and pleaded, please stay by the bed. And he says, no, you've got too much. And besides that, Joanne, we're taking your kids, except for Joanne. That's it. We made me mad. At yet you, at the time, hadn't even explained what all you, you've been going through? No. Nope. They could just read they it. Read oh, it. we knew it. She oh, and and I said, you're, you're not taking my babies. <laughs> they're not the problem. And Daddy says, I know they're not the problem, but you need to have some rest. And Bill was sitting there, and Bill says, I think they're right, sweet. And I says, you're not taking my babies. You're not taking them. And Dad says, yes, we are, for your safety. And they picked my babies up and took their stuff and left. Went clear back to Boise. And I found myself in an empty house with a sick baby. Was Barbara still there? She came just after that. It was just a little bit after that, Barbara came. Myra wasn't there yet. So that was your next, uh, another one. And that was the next one. Right? Uh, uh, that was your big load there. Your biggest load was Dad, with all these other things. Then you lifted that load there. From, not, you, not you and little, she was no, in a restaurant. No, you went to a restaurant. The, uh, restaurant fell there in, 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 in <laughs> there, there in Utah, Salt Lake. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Then Lenny fell in love with Mrs. Miller, yeah. and we had and to be out of that. Mrs. Miller was his uh, nurse. Uh, no, <laughs> <Jane>. <laughs> he was going to marry her, I yeah. tell you. And so then it's when Beth came and got him, because we knew we had to get him out of there. Well, we had to get him out of there. Well, I, I remember he was demanding to marry her. Oh, he was. Right. Yes. Oh, oh, and he yeah. was mad at us. Was because she better than Irene? Uh-uh. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. she was. She was better than who? Who's that? What's her name? Elmira. Elmira. No, no, no. We should have had that. Elmira. But it was his no, I'm glad to hear this about Barbara. I really am, because, see, I was still under a lot of pressure, and then when Barbara started giving this stuff, I just, I was at that point, I quit. Uh, I've had enough. <laughs> and yet she couldn't uh, quit. And I couldn't quit. Poor Barbara told me that it took a long time to get over that, uh, oh, that, that sure. terrible shock of, uh, of wondering now, see, uh, who I she did, really was. I didn't know that she had that feeling. She never expressed it. I just thought that she was mad at the whole world. She was, she was, she was angry with the family, too. Was she? Yeah, she says, she says, what other skeletons are in the closet? Oh, bless her heart. What else is there that I don't also, know? Also, to take out her parents. I know. Send Bob on a mission. I mean, Ben on a mission. Total break up there. to college, and she just, all of a sudden. I tried to understand that. I tried to understand how would I feel if if I were in her shoes and my parents, I never did consider the family, but if my parents both were taken and I was left here this age, and I tried to analyze that, but she wouldn't let me get close to her, and as a result, then I started getting standoffish myself, which wasn't, Smart on my part, but still, you have to understand. I was under a lot of pressure myself, and I probably wasn't reasoning reasonable and wise like I should have been. Bill was, you know, and then that was the thing that made me bad because he took her side, and I had to take my side. Yeah. And then it really hurt. Sure. Uh -huh. And then we kind of got at odds with each other a little bit. That's when you got the black eye. Yeah. From the door. But from the door. <laughs> but what? He was mad and leaving. He was leaving. Then <laughs> what happened? That she met. Yeah. Okay, she yeah. was dating another guy, pretty steady, and we, that Bill and I were not pleased with that. He was not a bad boy, but we, he was a wimp. And What's Bill, a wimp? Oh, um, mom was a little boy. Okay. And we knew it, and Bill kept saying, if she marries someone like th that, the marriage will be a bad one because she'll rule over him. He so says, what we got to do, hon, is get her with somebody that will allow her to be a person, but at the same time take complete control. Over. Yeah, and we had no idea. And boy, she was getting to like this guy a lot, and he liked her a lot. He came over all the time, and I hated it. This had to have been then just before the uh, that uh, plane crash. No, no, oh no, no. This, 
wrong now. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, okay, right. anyway, and so one Saturday, Bill says, let's go up to Park Valley. And he says to Barbara, why don't you come with us? And she he says, didn't He didn't know uh, Jay Kunzler at the time. Though, no, 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 right. no, no, no. All Bill knew was Chet and the other guy. Were they the ones that That's the only one. Well, and Jay, was on, on. Jay had been on a mission. Well, and, and he served time in the service. Were Kunzler's the ones that... Brought him down off the mountain. Yes, yes. Okay, and the but, only but one that Chet Bill was I, married. Chet was married. And, and, and we'd been up, listen, okay. we had gone up there many times. Then it was only for fun, night. wasn't it? Yes. The trip. Okay, it wasn't necessarily take Barbara to somebody. No, we just, right. Bill wanted to go up there again. He, he fell in love with Kessler's, and he loved the area. He loved Park Valley because it had the wild animals oh, and fun. The fishing. And he wanted to go up there again. <clears throat> and so he says, uh, and I was worried because I knew Barbara had a date that day, and I said, Bill, we can't go because Barbara's got a date, and I don't think it's right that we're gone while she's on this date. I think we should be here in case there's a problem. He says, well, she can go with us. And I said, she won't do it. I know she won't do it. He says, you watch me. I'll talk her into it. So he started to approach her on it, and he could see instantly that she wasn't going to go. So he says, why don't you bring your friend with us? Smart. And she says, well, I'll ask him if he wants to go. And so she called him up, and he was game. So we picked him up early the next morning, and we took off for Park Valley real early the next morning. And we got up to Park Valley and stayed there a long time that day. Never did see Jay. Never did. I didn't know there was such a person as Jay. We had a marvelous time that day visiting with counselors and just having fun. We didn't go fishing or hunting or nothing. Barbara was there with this guy. He just hanging on to her all day long, you know, holding hands and stuff all day long. We came back that night, went to church the next day. The following Friday night, Jay Kunstler calls me. It was late afternoon. Barbara hadn't got home from packing lumber yet. She was working as a secretary down there, if you don't remember. Yes. And I got this phone call, and as soon as I picked you the phone up to my ear, I was home with my little kids, like I always do. I picked up the phone, and as soon as I got to my ear, I knew it was long distance. There was a different sound to long distance. Yes. And I picked it up, and I, oh, you know, I didn't know what now was going to be told to me. <laughs> and this guy on the other end said, this is Jay Kunzler. Jay Kunzler. I says, Jay Kunzler? Big question mark. See, he says, Jay Kunzler, I'm a brother to Chet and Daryl. I said, oh, and I couldn't imagine why he was calling me. I didn't even know him, never met him before. But he was there that Saturday. We did not see him. But he saw Barbara. But he saw Barbara. He was he started to come around the house and from the field and he saw Barbara there with this guy. And I don't know why he didn't come in the house. What did he do? But he apparently watched her for a while and then he just went back out the field or whatever. But we never did see him, Bill and I never did see him and I don't think Barbara did either. He called me on the phone and told me he was a counselor and and uh, he said uh, Sister Packard, I'm going to ask you a question, and, and I want you to answer it truthfully if you can. If, you, if it's none of my business, you tell me so. And this was the question. He says, that little girl, Barbara, that's Bill's sister, that was with you last Saturday, uh, that boy she's with, are they going steady? And I said, no. <laughs> because there wasn't an agreement. Bill had told her, you are not going to agree to go steady. But she just kept going with him all the time. That was the only one she dated. And so to her, it was going steady. And I felt I was telling him the truth mm -hmm. because, you know. And I says, no, they're just good friends. <laughs> he says, that's all I want to know. <laughs> and unbeknown, and then he asked for the Packard Lumber number. He asked where she was. And I says, well, she's working down the Packard Lumber. And he says, I'd like to call there. Could you give me the number? And I gave her, him the number. And I get excited. Oh, yeah, I've never seen him before, but if he's anything like Chet and Daryl, hey, I'm game. <laughs> and Bill came home before she did, and I said, Bill, you will not believe what's happened this afternoon. And I told him, and we both were excited. Mm -hmm. Didn't even meet him, didn't know him, but we felt that was good <laughs> stuff. Barbara came flying home. She came flying through that door. That was the first time she started to act decent. She come flying through that door, and she says, you'll never believe what happened to me. And I didn't want to break her bubble. And I said, what? <coughs> Jay Kunzler called me, and he's coming down tomorrow night. He's going to date me. She was ecstatic. <laughs> and I said, what about, I can't remember the dumb guy's name. And she says, oh, well. You know, she did like that. And she flew downstairs, started to find calls and stuff, and Bill and I, we just acted cool. We acted like we didn't know a dang thing. Well, when Jay came and picked her up, talk about blow us away. <laughs> he walked through that door, big Abner like that, little Abner. Bill and I just sit there, we're 
speechless. Can't say a dang thing. He walks through that door and Bill, Bill says, she's supposed to be in by midnight. He says, I'll have her back. I think it was one week later. I may be wrong on that. But she came home with a diamond. One week <laughs> of flips. <laughs> I can't and Bill says, that's the one. Oh, Bill no. let I, her be herself, but he I can remember, keep things in control. I can remember uh, Barbara introducing Jay to me the first time and uh, telling me that he just recently returned from a mission. Yeah. And she was beaming oh. all over. Well, I could, I could see that about. she was totally in love with that man. She was. It was and, instantly. Uh, I was impressed with Jay. Oh, oh very. And was. not only because he had my own name, <laughs> I was impressed by him. And you know, he, he has impressed and Bill and I every time we see him. Every, oh, ever since. He is an unusual man. Uh, very. And uh, have you taken a look at his family lately? He's the only me. one. The BYU. Almost in the same place they were. Chet was killed. Did you yes. know that? In an airplane accident. Almost on the, the same, same place. Hunting for sheep. Same or area. Something. Cattle. Cattle. Checking and, on his and, cattle. Yeah. And you know, you know, after those parents died, uh, brother and sister counselor, that family just went crazy. They did. I've seen another family do the same thing. They, they became very uh, selfish and self-centered and forgot all the beautiful things that those precious parents taught, except for Jay. And, you know, Jay really was entitled to a big part of the, the that ranch, but there was such a big family stink on it, he just walked out and said, you guys can have it all. That's the way he did. That's the way he handled it. And he could be better off financially now if he would have just fought. He, he well, didn't feel let it was me tell you a little bit about that. The BYU, you see, he quit, he quit IBM. I know. Jay did. Uh, quit IBM. Uh, and he was, he you was, had a high paid job. Sure, but he was sure uh, questioning but, whether to come to BYU or not. He, oh, he sure, was. he was. He, he was. He'd already he, turned him down. He wasn't, sure that he, he, he wasn't sure that he could make a, a living big and, of pay. and yeah. raise the family, the science family and the type family that he wanted to. <clears throat> so he put demands to the BYU yeah. that were, I'm sure it was difficult to for them to meet, but they met it. Yeah. Then time passes on and. He's doing so great. And they liked him so much that they they wanted him to be head of his department, but he didn't have the degree that would allow it because of tradition and their principles, yeah. uh, their their rules, yeah. something like that. <clears throat> they, they told him what they wanted. So I think then's when he decided, well, maybe I'd better start taking some side courses on my own and get that degree. And he finally did it. I know. And then he became head of the park. It's he, been in the church news. Bill Murray kept up with choice. it. He is choice. And he's received a lot of awards. And you know this oh, little yeah. this little Barbara? Yeah. Still think, she still she's just still just lo in love, love with, with him. She's him just like day oh. one. And, it, and yeah. you know, she had never seen him, see? And when he walked through the door, you know how a teenager is. Ah. <laughs> I mean, she, but she didn't dare show it, but you could back. see what was happening. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> you know, and it, it was all there for the TV. Both of them. Both of them. I think he was Well, they just, were both ready oh, they just were. for marriage. And see, he was oh, pleased with her. her. Oh, he was. And she, something that she did that Saturday got him. Uh -huh. He impressed him to the point that he was willing to take that kind of a risk. Well, now, let's face it. She was a little dull. Uh, oh, oh, yes. yes. But he and had, he had a personality. Brothers. Well, and she had a personality, you guys, that reached out. Oh, yeah. Still does. You know, I mean, it's a sparkly, <clears throat> bubbly little thing, you know. And uh, I can see how he would, oh, well, i got to see. But, you know, to take the courage... To even take the courage call. To, to call, not even knowing us. Well, and Jay was kind of a mild-mannered. He was. He still, still is. is. <laughs> and, you know, the other thing that's neat about it, too, is that when, you know, Bill started asking questions, see, he's quite a bit older than Barbara. And Bill says, that's, that's good. That's what we need. <laughs> somebody that's mature, you know, and to, to keep it her. It was just an answer you know? for her. It was. And Bill and I had been praying, Heavenly Father. Bless her to meet somebody that'll handle her right. Uh -huh. Let me because tell we you, knew if we didn't, we would lose Barbara. Yeah. Let we me tell you the worry that Dee and I had about Barbara. You know, Mom was a great blessing to Dad, and Dad was a great blessing to yeah. Mom. But there are times when Mom insisted on on being dominant and uh, it created problems. Dee and I were able to see in Barbara some of the same qualities and the same drive and Mom. spirit and and uh, uh, I can't think think of the right words, but but so much like Mom that Dee and I were frightened. You were frightened. And so he and I took Barbara to the side, and uh, when we saw that she and Jay were going to get married, yeah. 
And he said, Barbara, you have the power to destroy your marriage. You have the power to, de to make your marriage. And you're a daughter of Esther Packard. And we hope that you will allow your husband, because he's capable, allow him to be head of the home and not dominate, not force your way. Be gentle, be kind, be the wife that you should be to him. Built and she said, I don't have any other desire. That's right. She did. And he made her feel that way, though. Are you saying that Bill, Bill gave her counselor yeah. counsel on that, too? Yeah. He did. Then he saw the potential oh, he problem. Did. He told me all the time. And, and, you know, as I look back over the time, of course, Barbara would really know, because she has been there living and participating, but I have I have seen her keep herself in control as a wow. beautiful wife beautiful. To, to a neat man. Really beautiful. 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 She's really kept like herself in control. Well, yeah. we've been proud of her. <laughs> absolutely proud of her. And then I want to just say one more thing. So now you know. Yeah. You know why okay. with Barbara. Anyway, and she wrote us a letter. It's been while we lived here. It's been probably five years ago. I got a letter from her, and she was apologizing for all the things that she had done. The so problems she had given the you? The problems she had given us for being such a rotten person in our home. And you know, Jay, I had forgotten that long years ago. I never, I'm a person that does not hold grudges. I don't believe in that. And I, I, she had been so beautiful with her marriage and everything, I hadn't even remembered it, really, till she recalled it to my mind. And so I sat down and wrote her a letter back. And I said, Barbara, I have not remembered this, and I don't want you to trouble yourself with it or punish yourself anymore with this. I don't want you to even think about it when you see me, because I don't remember it. <laughs> and I said, you didn't remember it against against her, but you sure remember it. Yeah, right. I don't remember it against her. Yeah, it's sitting in my mind, mind because it, it was a difficult time in my life. Too. Yes, and there was so many <coughs> other things. And, and so many my other marriage, right at the same time. you guys don't know this, but see, even through all this fussing with Bill and I, and I got mad a lot of times, mad than I should have gotten, I still loved him, and I still do. Yes. And that's what held it together. If I hadn't loved him so deeply, we may not have stayed together because that was a real tough time in our life. And he was struggling just as hard as I was struggling. His life was just as difficult as mine was. He was trying hard to please you and Dee and try to be a grown-up person and struggling with health problems that you guys don't even know about. See? Oh boy. Were, you, were you and Bill the first to receive Dad and care for him when yes. he came out of the hospital? Yes. Then you had the worst of all. Do you, you know why we did that? Let me tell you. I can tell you the day that we got him out of the hospital. Yes, it was June also the how 19th, long then? June 19th, 19th of, of that same year. Of, of the 57. Okay. Yeah. My sister was married in the Salt Lake Temple June the 19th of 1957. Bill, I had just taken him the week before that. He was still in the body cast and was still commanded by the doctor to be flat on his back. He could roll from one side of the bed to the other. And he wanted me to bring Bill in to the hospital to have x-rays taken. He had told us that it would be 17 months that Bill would be like that, that he couldn't sit, stand, or nothing. And so I don't remember whether I had Elsa's quorum people come in and carry him out carefully and put him in the car. I don't remember that. They laid him in the back seat. See, he can move his legs up and down now. He's gotten the use of his legs back. And so we laid him in the back seat. I don't know whether you guys came and helped. I don't remember that. But it was a week before my sister. It seems like it was June the 10th, if I remember correctly. It was just a, a week or so before my sister and her husband-to-be were to come down to Salt Lake and be. And I was still pregnant with Byron. Okay, because Byron wasn't born until July the 7th. <laughs> and I was real heavy with Byron, bigger than I should have been. I don't know why. He just protruded out there heavy. I didn't gain any more weight than I should have, but he was a big, he made me look big, <laughs> and I felt big. And um, we went to the doctor's that morning, and he took Bill in and uh, wheeled him in and had him x-rayed and wheeled him back out in the hall, and we were sitting there, and he said he'd come back and talk to us about, you know, what other things we might could do. He came out, and this is what he said, would you like to get up and walk? This is June. The accident was in April. And he was supposed to have 17 months of laying flat on his back. And I, I said to the doctor, you're joking. And Bill said, sure. You know I mean? How he, was, he was ready to go. And I said, you're joking. And the doctor said, Dr. Bach said, I have had many, many cases like this. And I, I can't explain this one. I cannot explain it. But he says, the x-ray show that that back is here. And Bill says, yeah, I want to get me started to move like he's going to. Dr. Box says, now you stay right there till I get you some crutches because you cannot 
get up on your own. Bill says, yes, I can. Dr. Box says, you can't. Now you stay there. And he went off and came back with a set of crutches. And Bill didn't realize, nor did I, that his, his legs, the muscles in his both legs, had atrophied a lot. Had what? Atrophied. 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 It means that they, the, the, they didn't do any, they didn't do any uh, physical therapy on him. And they've learned all that stuff now that you have to eat when a person is not using their muscles, their legs, you have to, somebody has to go in and make them do it. Yes. And if I'd have known that, I'd have been doing that. I was shocked as much as Bill was when he got, when he started to stood up, when he saw he, the doctor took us into a room where there were bars uh, on both sides and it was like an, uh, an aisle down there. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that aisle was a mirror, a full length mirror. Okay, he had Bill get up and he put those crutches underneath Bill's arms. And he could not hold himself. And he was upset. He was mad. He started to cry. Because before that accident, Bill was a beautiful physical specimen. He was a strong man. And he had a beautiful body. He took one look at himself in that mirror and he started to cry. And he bawled and he bawled. He couldn't walk. He couldn't take one step. He did not have the strength in his legs to do that. But see, he had pulled these things in the bedroom, you know, back and forth, and his muscles in his arms were real good. He still had good muscles What there. did this experience do to you when you saw him cry? Oh, well, I cried. <laughs> and he took all those things, and the doctor helped him start to learn how to walk, and he bawled the whole time. He and the there. sweat come and out of his head. And the sweat came down, you yeah. say? Oh, just the pain. And the doctor let him take probably about... Four, maybe five steps, and he says, that's enough for today. Bill says, no, sir, I want to walk the full length of this thing. And the doctor says, you can't. You're not able to. You'll pass out on it. And he forced Bill back. And we filled him out, and they lifted him into the cot and gave him the crutches. And we went home like that, and I helped him into the house. Okay? That was a week before my sister was uh, to be married. And the doctor said, you use these crutches. You'll have them probably for three or four months. And we got in the house, and Bill says, I'm not using these crutches. And, you know, he has a stubborn streak in him that maybe you guys don't know, but he can be awful stubborn. And I have to handle him carefully when he gets a stubborn streak, or you don't get anywhere. And I, I had been through so much, I said, Bill, you are going to use them. And he says, no, I'm not. And I said, well, you're not getting out of bed then. And so he agreed that he would use them. And he found out, you know, he, I know he probably tried to get out, but he couldn't handle it. And he had, he was forced to take the crutches. That whole week, he walked, 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 walked with those crutches. Toward the end of the week, he was walking pretty good with those crutches. And he was getting his strength back pretty good. And, you know, he had this bow and arrow thing that he wanted, that he had. It was a bow and arrow. And it was a 64-pound bow and arrow. 64-pound pull. Bow. Yeah, it took 64 pounds to pull that back. He could do it, a little man like that. <laughs> and the guy that sold it to him that said, you can't do it. And Bill says, you watch me. And he just keep working that. He took that bow in one hand and the arrows in the other and took a hold of the crutches and he walked down the stairs of that, front, that house that we had and went out into the front lawn and I kept saying, Bill, please don't go too far. He said, sweet, I'm fine. I'm fine. I left the door open to the house and I was working inside and he was out there shooting this dumb bow <laughs> and it had a steel end on it. It had a wood uh, thing. To Shaft. Do. Yeah. And you're talking about it, the arrow. Yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't a hunting uh, arrow but it was a, a target arrow, and it had a steel end on it. Call Marlene Teller, will be there. <laughs> and it, it, it had a steel, and he shot, the one he shot, he shot too straight up, and I had to look out at the window just at the right time. He shot it up, and I could see him look like this, and he grabbed a hold of those crutches and started to run with them, and he wasn't moving fast enough. You could see him still looking, and then he grabbed a hold of this body cast with the crutches still in his hand, and he really started to run. And then he started to yell my name. And I could see he was in trouble. And I ran out there, and he had exerted himself so that he passed out on me. And I had to... <laughs> well, he was trying to get him out from he under that He shot the arrow up in the air, and it was, went too straight. And he was coming right down where he was standing. See, he was trying to move out of the way. <laughs> it lit. What happened is the wind must have kind of shifted it, and it lit right in the hood of our car and oh. put a hole in it. Oh, wow. But that wasn't my concern. He yeah. passed out on me. He had worn himself out that he passed out on me. You know, and that's why he was yelling at me. He knew that he was going to pass out. 
Then when I got real upset, and I said, Bill, if you ever do this to me again, here I am still being pregnant. Well, I've got to drag my husband in the house <laughs> with a big body cast on and hope I don't hurt him while I'm doing it. And see, by now, I'm getting just a little ticked off. You can't keep doing this kind of stuff to me because I, you owe me something. <laughs> I've given you my whole life, you know, and I'm telling him all this stuff. <laughs> and he keeps saying, don't you talk to me like that? Don't you talk to me like that? Because he's stubborn, see? <laughs> I get him back in bed, and I said, Bill, if you ever do that to me again, <laughs> I just might leave. You know, I'm talking like this, not meaning any of it. Sure. Well, anyway, by the end of the week, he was walking pretty good, even without those crunches. <laughs> in fact, the body cast was so heavy on him that that it was rubbing sores on his hips, you know. And we went into town, into Salt Lake, the day before my sister was supposed to get married, and it was just a real comical sight. We had walked maybe more than we should have that day to different stores. And he kept saying, we've got to get back to the car, honey. I'm getting weak. And, I, and we were walking past to get back to the car. And finally, he just picked those crutches up so that they were parallel like this. And he picked up that body cast and was walking because it was rubbing his thighs so bad. <laughs> and people kept looking at us and, you know, thinking how crazy this guy is walking down there holding something and these crutches in his hand. <laughs> and we got him in the car, and he just almost passed out on me again. So I knew then that we could not go to the temple the next morning and go through the full session because he was not capable of that physically yet. And I really didn't think I could sit that long myself. I was just worn out. Tell me about this body cast. What was its purpose? Uh, what part of him did it cover? It covered from back. From here. Well, from the chest? It well, it, it, was, it went like this. It went across here, came down under his arm. And, and, and what, what kind of material was it that it came down? It was a heavy I'll go get those it. Metal? Metal? No, yeah, fiberglass. fiberglass, okay. Okay, it had came a hole in the center. High up on the chest and, and come down here, under the arms, under the arms covering the whole chest. And it came up, up the back and went across the back. With, yeah. with the two arms, shoulders coming out of the holes? Yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, he could move. There was no cast over the shoulder part, but it came up the back part of his shoulder blade and then went straight across the back, almost the same height that it was in front. Okay? The shoulders were open at the top then. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, Okay, and it was a it was a it was a plaster cast that they had. And how used far down on it? Look. Okay, and it came clear down, Jay, and it stopped right there. Uh, it came, it just cut, below right the hips. There. It cut right across there, and it rubbed right there. Well, and they had cut the center out about like that. What for? Well, because right after they had put that body cast on him, uh, when you go through an operation like he did, it causes gases before the body can start functioning again. Gases form in there, and he swelled up, and he was hurting so bad. So they quickly came in and cut that out so that that part of his body protruded around in the, out. Around in the, in in the, the, navel. Part of the stomach, yeah. navel area. Took in the navel area, okay. And that... Now, now, all of this, its purpose was to, to force him to walk straight. No, it was well, to support no. his back where they had fused that. See, they yeah. had to fuse that in, and they got wire. You had to look at By the, the way, there was, there was five vertebrae that was fused together, wasn't there? Yeah, five vertebrae. There's the, and that's in the lower area yeah. of his back. There are three lumbar vertebrae that are not fused in. Those are the three bottom ones. And then everything above that, clear up to there, right in there, is fused. He cannot bend that part of his back. I see. Okay, and you, you can, can see all the way down there. Then it's, it's five, the, the center five. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And they're immovable. They, they are fused in and they have wires. That's why, it, that's why it, it, it forces, it flips out when he tries to play that's baseball. That's exactly right. It, it, it flips those, out of Those three place. bottom lumbar are the ones that take the whole brunt of everything. Okay, and he slipped them out so many times now can't play that he can't do those things anymore. Because if they come out again, <coughs> they're afraid that he's going to uh, damage those discs in there, uh -huh. rupture those discs, because he's had a lot of problems. We just haven't ever said anything. I mean, it's just like, the other reason I haven't ever said anything much is because he has taken this very much uh, responsible to himself. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and I told, don't... He I told don't. me the other day, uh, I asked him the question, have you... Uh, have you um, uh, punished yourself. Yes, he and has. He said yes. Yes, he has. I couldn't keep him. I know he has. And Bill and I have sensed that. We, uh -huh. I sensed it the very night they came in because when Dee saw me, as they get, got out of the ambulance and Dee walked in, he's the only one that walked in the rest of them in on stretchers. As soon as Dee saw me, this is what he said to me. I have never forgotten it because it shocked me. I, I wasn't thinking anything. I was just glad everybody was alive. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wasn't blaming anybody. Even all that bad feeling that I had about Bill going, it just left me. Yeah. Uh -huh. You don't it think just about it. It just left me, and I was so glad to see everybody alive. And, and I, at that moment, felt, because they were all in the hospital, that everything was going to be peaches and cream from that point on. I never dreamed that we'd have all this happen. I just figured that those doctors were God, and they could save everything. They could correct everything. 
when Dee walked in, he, he came in after the stretchers were brought in. He followed right in behind it, and as soon as he saw me, and he was holding uh, his nose with a, his handkerchief, and it was mm-hmm. all bloody. And he wasn't bandaged up yet? Oh, or he was. No, no, no. He's right. still, he just said he wasn't. No, his face is still. still <coughs> he had this handkerchief to his nose, and he kept bringing it out. It was bloody. He kept bringing it out, and he put it back there. And as soon as he saw me, he says, you ought to hate me. I remember he said that, and I said, gee, why? He says, because. And then he went and sat down. You know, and I, I thought about that a million times, and I wondered why he said that, because I had never given any indication okay. at all that I was resentful for what happened or anything. I mean, I was just so glad everybody was there, and I never have, not even from that moment. No. Why but he, he said that to me, and I don't know why he said that to me. You don't know why he might have? Oh, did, because okay. he, did he, I think he, he felt awful responsible for what did happened. He, did he ridicule uh, Dad, or did he coax Dad out of, uh, did he ridicule him about the dream? A uh, coax dad uh, uh, no, away I from the dream. I, I, I don't think he ridiculed dad on the dream at all. He just, uh, I think it no, angered no, dad. Dad, uh, D a little that your dad had that dream. You know, that happens to me once in a while. I'm mad because if that's going to happen, it makes but, me mad. But I don't know. think that was brought up at the last, the time of and, the trip. And I'll let you know that D never knew the feelings I had about Bill going, and he didn't know that Bill and I had a real bad fuss about that. I see. Even our kiddies didn't. Our children did not know that. But it was one of your major fights? Yes. I didn't want him to go. I just, and I don't, I can't even to this day explain why. I just know I didn't want him to go, and I hated it. I hated it. Mm. And I hated it so bad that it just wouldn't leave me. It stayed with me every day from that point that I learned the to it. Well, then the, the morning that Bill did leave, you know, Bill didn't give me a chance to tell this last night. Well, Bill, but, well, when he did leave, I, I was really upset. And I, but I kissed him goodbye. I remember that because I've always remembered my mother always said, don't ever let your husband leave when there's bad feelings. Make sure that, you know, you do kiss him and things are okay. And I, I wanted to make sure that that was the case. But I, after he left, I kept hoping that when they got down to the airport, they would change their mind. But they didn't because he did come back. And, after, and my kitties were still sleeping. My babies were still sleeping. And uh, after, I don't know how long, I finally got sleepy and went to sleep myself. And I really feel that was the way the Lord blessed me that day. Perhaps I would have been able to have handled it at all. And, it, well, after, just soon after Bill left, he, I can't remember exactly, it seemed like he left about 5 or 5.30. And, and I busied myself around the house, and about 7 o'clock, no, it was 8 o'clock, I remember, it was 8 o'clock, I was feeding my kids breakfast. They were sitting at the table about 8, just around there, either a little before or a little after. Because I remember I looked at the clock, because remember the dream I told you about Mike, my brother? about my grandma being dying. Remember I told you that? Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. I have my two little sweeties sitting at the table, and I'm fe- fixing it, you know, pouring milk mm-hmm. on the cereal. About they don't even know that Bill was going on the plane car plane. <coughs> they didn't even know he was gone that morning. They did not know. And he, the, from Wednesday until Saturday morning, Bill came home after the children were put at bed at night. He came home so late I had to put them to bed. It happened Thursday night the same, and Friday night we went on that uh, party to the elders' corn party, and so the kids signed for just a second or two, but they were asleep by the time we came home that night, and they were still sleeping Saturday morning when he left. So at around 8 o'clock, we're sitting at the table, and I'm pouring milk to my little Raymond. And it seems like Raymond How was about he? three then. About three years old? Mm-hmm. And he said, um, where's Dad? And I said, oh, he's gone. He'll be back tonight. And I didn't say he was gone on a plane. I did not say that. I just said, he's gone. He'll be back tonight. And this is what Raymond said. Daddy, airplane, hurt. And I said, no. And he said, Daddy, airplane, hurt. And I said, no, Raymond, no. And he repeated the third time to me when I became his <laughs> And it upset me so bad. I gathered those babies together, and I we knelt down and had prayer. And I went to bed. I put those babies with me, and we went to bed. And the next thing I remember, the phone rang, and it was noon. And I answered it, and Barbara was hysterical, absolutely hysterical. And I couldn't make out what she was saying. She says, they're dead, they're dead. And I said, who, Barbara? And she kept saying, they're just all dead. And finally, I, said, I got across and I said, Barbara, now you tell me. Who is it? And she says, they crashed, and they're all dead. And I said, Barbara, you hang up this phone right now. I'm going to call Boise. 
and I got on the phone, and I called my mom, and in the calmest way that I could, I said, Mother, have you heard from Bill this morning? She did not know he was coming, but he had promised me that when they landed in Boise, he would call her and tell her that I loved her, her and Daddy. And he wanted to. It was something he wanted to, because he has always felt close to my parents. He really has. There's been a very beautiful companionship there. And uh, I called my mom. And uh, I says, have you heard from Bill this morning? She says, well, uh, was we supposed to? And I says, well, he and Dee and his parents were flying to Boise on the way to Portland. And while they stopped in Boise, he was going to call you. And she says, no. And by this time, she could tell I was upset a little bit. And she says, what's wrong? And I says, well, Barbara called. And, and then after Bob, Barbara called me, I switched on the radio. And I started getting all kinds of junk. You can't imagine. While I was dialing my mom. And it was on the news that these guys from Bannifo, and it said that some were dead, and one had come in, walked in, and he was delirious, and this kind of thing. You know, and then the next report was, uh, they weren't all dead, but they didn't know how many were dead, but there were some dead. You know, and I'm sitting here, who is it? Which one? You know, and... They had reported that some were dead. Yes. Okay. They kept doing this, kept doing it, and I was so mad. And, you know, that, that shocked me because I'd always been told that, the, uh, that whenever there was an accident, it would never come over the radio that the police would come to your home and inform you, or they would call you. Call you first. Okay. But anyway, uh... That's the way it should be. Yeah. It wasn't with our boys. It either. wasn't. And, um... So uh, my mother said, uh, Joanne, now don't get upset. Don't borrow trouble. My mom and dad always told me that. Don't borrow trouble. We'll check around up here, and we'll call you back. Well, it was about 15, 20 minutes. My mother called back, and this is how she began her conversation. She says, now, Joanne, please don't get upset. But we called Chet Moulton, the aeronautics director here in Idaho, and he says that there is a plane missing, that the flight plan was filed for Boise, and it has not arrived yet, and they don't know where it is. And so she says, don't borrow trouble. Maybe they're safe somewhere. You know, that's the way my mother was. Well... I got on the phone, and I called the highway patrol, the Utah Highway Patrol. And uh, he said, yes, the plane is down, but we don't know yet what all, what, what, what's going on. He says, there is survivors, but we don't know how many. And he didn't, I asked him if there were any dead. He says, we don't, we can't confirm that at this point. So I called Barbara back, and she's just hysterical. So, I mean, she, I don't think she even listened to what I said. And by this time, Benny was getting all worked up. Those three kids were, Bernie and Benny, left home by themselves, and those kids didn't have any guidance at all, and they just kind of went to pieces. Uh -huh. They really did. Uh -huh. And so uh, I called them, and I said, now you guys just stay right where you are, and we'll wait. And Barbara was saying, well, listen to what the radio's saying. I said, Barbara, we're not going to listen to the radio. We're not going to pay attention to what the radio's saying. We're going to keep contact with you, the hideaway patrol. And I told the guy, I gave him my number, and I said, you call me as soon as there's any change or if you know where they're being taken or anything. Well, you know, that was the longest day of my life. No, they didn't get taken into the hospital till 7 o'clock that night. That night. That was yeah, the longest day of my life. The crash was 8 in the morning. Yeah. These watches smashed in at 8. And that's the eight. time that, Bar that little... Raymond said what he did, because I looked at the clock real quick. I looked at the clock, and it was right up 8 o'clock. That's and, when it happened. And that's when it happened. Exactly. And see, I didn't know that then. Well, we the rest of the day, we um, I just kept waiting. And like I said, it was the longest day of my life. I t it was a miserable day. And um, my mom and dad, I think, called one more time to try to console me. You know, and I told them, I said, it has crashed, mom and dad. And they don't know. They say there's some dead, but the highway patrol will verify that. And Dad kept saying, now, don't think the worst, Joanne. Just trust in the Lord. You know, I kept talking like that. And I guess they got in the car soon after. Well, it was in the afternoon because they, they met me at Tremont in that evening. Well, yeah, but we picked them up. You're the ones that picked them up. Yeah, we picked them up. But, but it was after we got into Tremont. I was already there. Yeah. They were already, had been at trade and everything. Yeah, like you well, and, yeah. and Dee was bandaged up and yeah. sitting just inside the yeah. hospital. Yeah. And all. <laughs> and those people, oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all um... So I kept contacting I the highway patrol, me. and finally he called me, and he said, they are taking them, they have them at Park Valley, that's what he said, and I said, are there any dead? And he said, not at this point, but they are serious. And he said, they're taking them to True Mountain Hospital, unless things are really bad, uh, they'll bring them, they'll leave them at Tremont Mountain Hospital. So he says, if things are really bad, they'll leave them at True Mountain Hospital. If they can stand the trip to Brigham City, they'll take them to Brigham City. And he says, what you'll need to do is stop in Ogden and call and see if they continued on 
if they're going to continue on to Brigham City. <clears throat> so I, I called Benny and I told him, and he, I, he said, well, I was going to go in my own car. I wanted, I'm really independent that way. I still am. I like my own car. <laughs> yeah. So I can come and go as I want. And, but Benny kept saying, no, I want you to go with me. Uh, I, I'll do the driving. And they had that black and, and uh, yellow mercury. And so they, I said, well, I can't take these babies. It just wouldn't be right to take these babies. And so Barbara said she would volunteer. But, you know, I was worried about everything because she was hysterical. Huh. I just didn't know how well she'd be able to take care of those kids because she, she just wasn't functioning as a human being. She wasn't. But I just trusted because I didn't know what else to do. And we'd only been there five weeks. I really didn't know anybody in the ward. I just didn't even know who to go to. I just didn't even know. And those guys came over, those uh, two boys and Barbara, and we took off. And I'm telling you, Benny drove like a wild man. Who did you have to take care of your children? Barbara. I had Barbara and, stay. And, and Bernie? No, nope. Bernie and, and Benny were in the car. And then when those guys kind of learned what I really was like, that I, did, that I wasn't really all docile. Because here I am being pregnant, I got two babies down there and an injured husband up here. And you know, there's a lot of things that run through your mind. You're going to try to keep things together just as much as you can. Because long, those four years that Bill and I were in the service, like I told you, we were a close family. And we had good feelings. And I wanted that back. And uh, and I kept thinking, we just can't have any more accidents. We just can't have anything more go wrong. Well, those guys started driving like wild kids. And uh, finally, uh, I was up there for my life. I feared for another accident. And I said, Benny, you got to slow down. There's no need for this. Even if we, he says, well, I want to get there before the ambulance. And I said, Benny, that has no bearing whatever. If we have an accident, we won't get there. Well, then Bernie told me that I didn't need to interfere with their business, that they drive the way they wanted, and it made me mad at those two guys, because <laughs> I felt like my life was in danger. <laughs> and so they continued for a little while, and finally I said, if you guys don't stop driving like this, you stop this car, I'm getting out. And I said it just like that. And they chastised me still, but they did slow down. And, but I had to continually, the whole way, and I realized they were upset, they were distraught. But I just felt we needed to be wise in what we did. And we stopped uh, at Ogden, and they told us that they were taking them through tree lines, and we just went on up there, and we got there before the, the ambulance did. We were waiting for the ambulance when they came in. And you know, when they brought them all out of there, and Bill could talk to me, but oh, he was in such pain. <coughs> and Daddy did say, well, he looked the worst of them all. I really fear, feared for him. I did. He looked worse than Grandma? He, he just looked like he'd been beat to death. He looked worse than Grandma? Yes, he did. He had a, a black ring around here. Around, uh, uh, around the his eyes. forehead and eyes yeah. and over his temples? Yeah, and it was swollen, and it was black and blue. And his jaw just hung wide open. From both sides. Both sides. Both sides were broken, of course. Yeah, he just hung <coughs> there. And he, he was breathing, you know, funny. I didn't understand. Look at him. And then when I saw Mother Packard, she responded. She, she was very keen. She wasn't uh, delirious or nothing. And one of the first questions she said to me, are we all in the same hospital? And I said, yes, all of you are. And she seemed to be relieved over that. You know, but Bill was in such pain. He was just, he wasn't yelling at that point, but he was, you could hear him. He was making a lot of noise. And, you know, that was hard to take, too. And Dr. Ficklin made a quick assessment of everything, and he said, we need to take this one in and have him x-rayed. And when Bill, he started to touch Bill, he just screamed, don't touch me, leave me alone. But he just hauled him down. <coughs> I don't know if you were there by then. You weren't. No. You weren't. They were in their room. We could hear him there. just screaming. Yeah. Terrible. It was it, it, terrible. Bill. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he was just screaming, just screaming. It's terrible. I just, it was awful. And they were lifting him see, off that stretcher and putting him on the x-ray table. And he just screamed. And then I think he must have passed out because it got real silent. And I got worried that he died. And I, you know, you don't dare to say much. And I knew he was suffering terrible. Oh, see, I felt so and nothing, nothing was said. We just sat there. What was B doing during this time? He just sitting there holding his nose like this. His face. Kind of uh, and yeah, kind of holding his face like this. He was kind of pinching on nose, but he had this over like this. He, he was trying to keep... You know, I guess this was yeah, burning. mental anguish. Oh, my. Uh, and he hadn't been stitched up or... No, or no, sir. D he did not out. leave that hospital. He wouldn't get stitched up there. He, he refused was the it. first one that come in. Yes. yes. He refused but he to went to Salt so Lake right. to be stitched up. Because he said, well, the attention Dr. To go to Hickens. Hickens is the one that's going to stitch me up because he stitches good. But and he, he didn't want to take the attention. No, well, I knew, well, I knew, knew, I knew, 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 knew
doctor, he can stitch him up so good you can't see it. I can't, but I can't was see it, anything. Did you see any evidence of Dee crying or, or, oh, oh, or yeah, anything yeah. To, that showed showed he was under oh, under a heavy load? Yeah. He was crying, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. Tears just kept running down his face, and he... He can talk. How many times in your life have you seen Dee uh -huh. cry? Yeah, huh? any? Time seen well, see, we got to know. We, we went to Boise. We were to meet them at Bradley Air Force. Uh, yeah, Air yeah, Force. yeah, you were. And we were there waiting. And okay. no no sign of them and no sign of them. And finally, they, they contacted them in Park Valley and said they've landed safely in Park Valley oh, because of weather. They did? So we turned around and drove clear back to Marsing. Mm -hmm. We had only been in Marsing maybe... Um, 45 minutes or something, I don't remember, just so long, and we got a phone call that they crashed in Park Valley mm -hmm. and were being taken to the Tremont, uh, Tremont Hospital. Yeah. So we phoned your parents, told them that we were coming, oh. and we'd pick them up. Just I didn't We left our kids. nine kids home. I didn't no. expect my parents, because yeah. when you came in that night, your mom and dad, I think it was just my mother that came no. with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it might have been. I think it was it just my mother. Been. I think it was just my mother. But we, we phoned her and told her that we'd yeah. pick her up, and we left our nine kids home. And when she and walked in, I said, oh, "Please, because yeah. I needed her." And when we walked in that hospital, Dee and I, we were sitting down there, yeah. just inside, on the yeah. right. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It was and the mental anguish that oh, boy. Terrible. You know, and after they, after after uh, that, the uh, X-ray bill. He was still on the X-ray table, and he was quiet then. I think they must have given him a shot. Oh yeah. yeah. But he still. The doctor between. Oh, he did. We went up to his room, and you were leaning over him, and right there, and oh, he terrible. was. He never did get completely out of pain. He oh. had pain constant from the, that time until they operated on him. Well, and after the operation. Yeah. Until it kind of healed a little, but. Uh, Dr. Ficklin then, after after he got silent on that uh, extra table, and I was sitting there wondering, did he pass away, you know? Because then I began to realize, this thing's not, this, these doctors may not be able to solve this problem. The first thing first came in, and like I told you, I was so relieved. All my problems are all over. These doctors can take care of anything. Then I began to realize, you know, the way it was a little hospital. This, this is serious business, you know? Dr. Ficklin walked down, and he said to me, I went to come down here, and I went down with him, and he showed me the X-ray. Bill was laying there, and I don't know whether Bill could hear him or not, but he, he had those X-rays up against that light, and he showed me that back. And it was when, when the plane lit down and they settled down, you know, this flank like this, sure. the top yeah. broke out like this, and then it chipped like that, all the way down. Chipped, uh, chipped uh, down those five vertebrae. Chipped them all off. Okay. And, and when, when, when they, they brought him in, yeah, you could see it. You could see the whole thing. And when they brought him in, see, it was pitched like that. Well. And this part, pitched down right at about a 45 degree angle. Yeah, it was about like that. And this part right there. What was pitched down? Each vertebrae? No, this part of his, the bottom part, the bottom part of his spine yes. was jammed up against the top part like that. I see, with them overlapping at they a 45 overlapping. degree angle. Yeah, and this one was closed tight against the top one. And this one was sticking out. So that meant that the, the, the spinal cord uh, was, was being pinched, right pinched there. around. Well, and Dr. Clinton <coughs> told me, he said, uh, we've tried for feeling in his legs and he doesn't have any. But how did it keep from breaking the... The Heavenly Father took care of that. He had to have Because it that's it. usually severed. I know, it stretched it. It just stretched yeah. it. And see, they, they took a, a spinal tap below the brake and they couldn't get any fluid at all. They can get but but for him to get out and walk like I he know. did with it. We're talking but about... But you know, but you, you see, at this point in our lives, and Bill and I have talked about this a lot, we're grateful to Heavenly Father for this experience because we were drifting away from things that we had already patterned in our life that were good, and we were drifting away from it. And it's like Bill said, as he sat up there in that plane, he promised Heavenly Father that he would correct the problems that we had started in just that five weeks at Bountiful. And he promised the Lord that if he would preserve him and let him walk, that he would never let that happen again. Okay? And see, and I was making some promises down there, too, that I wouldn't get so angry because I was upset that I'd gotten so terrible angry over him going on that plane. And I, I was making promises to the heavenly... Okay. Uh, you, you were saying... That you, you were saying, saying that, that you made promises to Heavenly Father. I did. And yes. what, what did you say about Dee was I, doing what? I'm sure Dee was too. Dee had, was expanding his business. At that Packard building and such. And worldly, uh, things, worldly things were becoming very important. Worldly things, I mean, he was working 
ninety percent of the time, and and uh, his children were suffering from, it. Suffering from yeah. it. And, and I think Lou was too. Well, I do too. Because she made a comment once. I remember one day that he had off. Uh, they went fishing, I think it was, and she says, "I'll spend just as much money that he spent on fishing while he's gone yeah. on things that I want for this house." And yeah, she, did. she ran off. She ran off. Uh, shopping that day, and I thought to myself, uh, I, that had never entered my mind yeah. about doing that to Bill, but it put a new idea into my mind, because I thought, well, I wish I could do the same, but see, we didn't have yeah. the money to do that, yeah. and I remember reasoning that in my mind, and then the thought came to me, now that's not the right thing to do, though. That drives couples apart. Yeah. I remember you reasoning see, myself uh, that way. I remember before Dee moved to Bountiful, him making this statement because we knew that Salt Lake was kind of all Mormon and to the, it was not as righteous as out in these areas, you know. And I remember Dee making a statement that if the time ever come that he didn't put church first, he hoped the, the Lord would do something, do something to, to put him on the right track. And I think this that accident was, was the thing that put right. everything back on the right track. I Even though it. Dee took it as a personal fault. I, I wish he wouldn't. I wish he wouldn't, too. Wouldn't. Because no, there were several things had to be accomplished. Yeah. Uh, Mom, Bill and I, are Mom, for the I think, yeah. Mom, I <laughs> think, I thoroughly think she had cancer. Well, not And sure. Mom was stubborn enough that she wouldn't go to oh, the doctor. Why do you okay. think? Why do you think but, Mom had cancer? Also, because she had been draining for quite a long time. Have you have you ever earlier in the years heard Mom discuss the subject of cancer oh, and yes. express her fear for cancer? Yes. Oh I yes. Have. I yes. had too. I've yeah. heard it yeah. at least at least twice that I can. Okay. But you've heard it a number of times too. Yeah. And I think Mom definitely yeah. had cancer. Okay. Is it I just one breast never. or both? No, I think it was just one. But I think that there would be no way, picturing my mother, oh, she that she death could death. have died a slow, long death. No. She couldn't have endured it. I'll, I'll well, she said that she didn't want to ever and become right. a burden to anyone. And the Lord blessed her in that area. That's right. Yeah. Therefore, that was one blessing. I think another thing, too, Beth, as I see it now and look back on it, uh, she, I don't want to use the word meddlesome, but it, that's the only way that I can describe right. it. And she was being a little meddlesome in, in the marriage of the family. Yeah, she was. Yes. And, and I know for you myself... You were getting too closely involved really? there. And I know for myself, because I've uh, it Now, out. this meddlesome bit, though, you do realize it that it was always constructive. Oh, yeah. In her mind, it was. Oh, it was. In her mind, it was, Jade. Yes. But it was but things it wasn't, that they should have figured but it was, out. That is true. Well, yeah. and, true. you know, she, she... I just have to say this, and I hope you guys don't take it wrong. Just say it. Not. Okay? Just say it. Um, Bill never ate a couple of our home either. I see. He went over there and ate. Because she on knew way home for, Yeah. She Why do you think he did? Because she invited to talk, him. I asked. And to he talk was, to me and to mom. Go, and I can understand if he was homesick. He hadn't been around his parents for four years, but neither had I. Yeah. And I still give him mine up. And he was with his. And he would go that way on his way home from work. Just not with the intention of eating supper, but just to say hello. Just to spend some time. Yes. yes. And I have no objection to that. But then Mother but it would wind up being back for right. supper, or supper at all. Right, and and I are sitting, I've got supper all prepared, and we eat supper without him. <laughs> then he comes home and he doesn't want to eat because he's already eaten. And yeah. that, that was becoming a habit. Uh -huh. It wasn't just but happening then, once in a while, it was happening night after night after night. But it wasn't t just you either. I know. I'm sure it was the others. There was just too that. close of an involvement there. Really okay. Do you think was... Mom realized what she was doing? Um, no. I don't not think so. Not I don't think she was deliberately doing it. No, 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 no. no. I don't uh, think she was deliberately okay. doing it. Okay. In other words, because, hers, let me tell you what happened. These were acts of love as far as she was concerned. And unity. Family well, unity. wait a minute, though. Let me, but she was excluding the daughters in laws was she? Yes, you see, I wasn't. And let me just explain something else. And you guys may not believe this. You might think just I made this up, but I didn't. Okay, go ahead. Okay. There was one time during that time that Bill was stopping every night, but Daddy Packard was up working close by where we were living. He was working in the subdivision there doing something. I don't know what. And we had a good report of Daddy Packard, and I did. And I really loved him. And he stopped by just about supper time that night, just to stop by. That's so why I invited him to come in and eat. And I didn't mean anything by it. I just invited him to come in and eat. And he accepted the offer. And he stayed late. The next morning early, I got a phone call from Mother Packard, and she told me I'd better not ever do that again. Mm -hmm. And I tried to explain to her that I, I just 
you know, I wasn't trying to hurt her or anything. She says, I prepared supper for him. He will eat at my home. And so I never invited him ever again. And then when I knew I had a conflict going here, I was wise enough to know that, and I knew i got to get away from here. I can't live here. It's not going to work. Yeah. You know, we'd only been there five weeks. Yeah, you see. Uh, but how long did you wind out living there? In Manifold? Yes. We stayed there uh, from 57 until, what was it, 60? Three years. But uh, at the time she said, I can't live here, I, I've got to get That's away. Just, Were you about, talking about yeah. getting away from Bountiful? Yes. Yeah. I, w I wanted to get but away from And we the just got there. And it was before the accident. I, I could see. Where you'd be alone and making your own decisions. Yep. All of but after the accident, it changed. They stayed longer than they. Well, what choice did we have? That's we right. Were poor you were tied there. And D and J were just super neat. Yeah. I mean, there was a good Well, there. there's another thing. Bill had the concrete work, and he was excellent. And he, uh, he, was, he was already excellent in it. In it. He was, yes, he was, he was already, already in it. in it, see. And, uh, but there's another thing I think needs to be brought out. There was not only Mom, I'm sure, had cancer, and she knew it. Yeah, she did. She, she knew the death of it. In yeah. fact, she had a, uh, I know she had an appointment she, to go and she wouldn't go. It. That's right. She, she wouldn't it. go. Okay, I think that was one thing that the Lord had to take over. Yeah. Okay, another one was... Uh, uh, the family <coughs> involvement. It was pulling them apart rather than unifying them. And uh, Dee was becoming too worldly, and he needed to get back to but what see, he could I want be. you to realize, I want you to realize right now, here, that it wasn't, it wasn't just Dee becoming worldly, it because was it was unit. Dad that first came up with the lumberyard yeah. idea. D yeah. had his own business yeah. before anyone ever went there. D had D was worth that was too well bad. over eighty five thousand dollars. Now that that was in and it almost when, broke when it was big money. Oh, he, it, oh, that it almost broke into the wall. That's right. And when Bill and I have well, felt bad about that. Yeah, he, well, lost he, lost he lost everything. He lost everything. This is true. He this lost is true. And that was a sad thing. But almost the Lord had to interfere in order to to accomplish that. What I'm trying to point out. about that a lot. We have felt very bad about that because all of a sudden D was just crashed right. That's right. And, and it and, was all because he was trying to help this and uh, bring you in and bring mom right, and dad exactly. in and bring Bud and Marion in. And, and, and he overexpanded too quick because of his right. loving nature, and we have felt bad about that. No, I don't that. mean to accuse Dee of becoming worldly. I mean the whole program, the whole thing that was meant to unify the family see, and everything. You see, dad and mom's teaching to us taught... Uh, uh, love and yeah. unity and family, right. uh, and family worked on that. working together and all, and, and and so we all had a little of that tendency, and it yeah. was just gravitating in that but direction. Also, but also, also D felt really the balling. responsibility, yeah. and I tell you, he worked from daylight till I know. dark. He did. He really did. To uh, to make it go and to make it uh, successful. I I made the but wrong see, statement I didn't, in I saying that he was yeah. getting too. Far. I, they, um, they I didn't wrong. I didn't come up from uh, California to. Uh, uh, Salt Lake to live there and work with D until after all of this that's was over. Right. That's, that's right. That's exactly right. Okay, now there's something else that the Lord knew had to be accomplished, and that was Barbara and Jay. That's right. And some you know, way, he, and look at the mission that both of them are fulfilling. Some way, those with two Heart Valley to clear out in their boonies like that, yeah. how would they ever met? It they would have, have been a never. They never would have, never would have, never have met. Would have met. Because okay. their age difference is too much. If he'd been going to college, he would have been out before she got in. Right. And there I'm, was just no the, way. The Lord had to provide a way. There was just, uh, I'm not sure uh, about the boys going on missions. You know, uh, things were tight then. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure. Also, oh, Jay's own family had to be, I mean, Dee's own family had to be turned around a little bit. Yeah, and there were so many things that, that weren't being accomplished the way things were going. That I think the Lord just plain let, took let, it me tell you, let me tell you a little experience that uh, that uh, I I I suspect now, and it just came to me, was in Mom's mind. <coughs> <coughs> Mom had not been victorious with me yet. She knew that I was out mm -hmm. out out of the line of the family, out of the line of and the church. And did you know church. that was a start that did that too? What? That funeral was what started you back the other That's way. That's right. That's right. I had already started, had but, but that, that played a major role. Uh -huh. uh, but let me tell you, back in, uh, I, in, in 1950, I believe it was, I got a call from Mom 
uh, and, and she said, Daddy and I are going to buy the 40 acres farm just across from Cole School, and, uh, and uh, Dee is going to come here, and as a family, we're going to, we're going to develop that, that 40 acres. And uh, uh, would you like to come up and work with Dee and build it out? And uh, we'll, we'll all work together on it. And I said, I, I said, it sounds good. Maybe, maybe I'll talk it over with Flo. And uh, <clears throat> I said, Dee, come in there? She said, yes. So I, I said, all right, I'll talk with Flo, and, and we'll make a decision. Contact you. We'll be back. We've got to go. Okay, let's hurry back. We will. I said, I'll make a decision, and uh, talk, uh, Flo and I will make, uh, talk it over, make a decision, and uh, I'll get back to you. And so Flo and I talked it over. And MGM was slow at the time. TV uh, had moved in and was was taking a big bite out of the box office. And as a result, why well, we decided that we would do that. And Flo was gentle with me. She she uh, I could persuade her in something like this because it was the, operating the kitchen. Why well, no? It would be her. But uh, in making the uh, the family uh, budget, why well, it's me. <coughs> So, I quit MGM, we sold our home, and packed things up, got the van loaded, and we, we moved to Idaho. Meridian. Yes, That's to Meridian. Yes, uh-huh. Okay, now the reason for the move was to go into business with Dee and with the family but in Dee construction. When I got there, Dee knew nothing, uh, Dee wasn't there, and I later called him, why, and, to, and found out that he knew nothing about it. But the reason Mom had done it is her desire for two things, at least. One, to, to have Jay in a better environment, see if it wouldn't correct him. And number two, this family love and family unity. She had great desire for family love and unity. <clears throat> okay, now I suspect, as I look back onto the whole thing, that when, <clears throat> when things went wrong in Meridian... And Mom determined that it was best as a family to terminate there and go, to, her whole go to Bountiful, Utah. She was thinking of Dee being very successful there as, as a builder. And Dad was on his mission. She swung the idea by Dad. Yeah, I think that's all right. So Mom so, began to sell things out there. And they moved Lock, Stock, and Barrel to, to Meridian. I mean to Bountiful. And then that, when Dad came home from his mission, there's where he gave his, his uh, return address. And life for the Packard family now was in Bountiful with Dee, all of them there close together. Mm -hmm. But Jay and Flo and their family wasn't there. Yeah. And so I suspect <clears throat> that that's one of the ideas or one of the things in the background uh, when they decided, uh, they, they took the idea of having a lumber yard, Packard lumber yard, to D, this is, uh, D told me that it was Dad's idea that uh, they had been uh, ordering big truckloads of lumber to the project, and uh, uh, they had been buying from a fellow that was trucking it in and and parking it sort of at a certain location there. And that location, he, he even started a, himself uh, a building, and that particular location was where Packard Lumber wound up being because. As the family purchased this man out, but it was Dad's idea in the first place. Dad made the, <coughs> the original contacts. D said, "Well, I think that also excited Mom. Bud was there too. Mm -hmm. Most of the family were there, except this this circle of dentists there in in uh, Southern California that were uh, taking care of themselves, They're doing a, doing a good job. Were they in Portland at the time in yeah. in Dell School? All right, okay." Now, so wait. I suspect. Oh, wait. No. They, they had finished. They had gone to California. Yeah. They came yes. from California. Well, see, they were a nucleus you know. in, uh, of themselves, and yeah. Mom felt secure and safe with them. But this, was, this would, uh, in Mom's eyes, unite everybody mm -hmm. and uh, also be a good constructive thing. Mom was wise enough to realize that two heads are better than one. Uh, two people working on one project will make a, a bigger, better project out of it than than two people working on two different projects. Uh, there's, there's power in unity, strength in it. And so I suspect that this was in Mom's mind, but it, 
it took more than what mom realized to bring it about. It it took mom's death. Yes, but it mom, knowing mom, I think it, in a sense she was willing to give her life. I mean, that's the kind of person she was. If she had any control over her relationship with her heavenly father and such, to give her life to accomplish this great big thing of bringing Barbara back with Jay and and getting you guys together and getting Dee's family back going the right direction and Bill and Joanne going the right direction and Bud and Marion, because right after that, when Bud and Marion were married, no, when uh, Bob and Talmadge were married, we went to the temple. We, were all, we all went down there, and it wasn't too long after this all happened. And again, I could just see Mom in the picture governing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, they asked Talmadge and Butt to be witnesses at the temple. When we went in... For who's married? For Bob. Bud and Marion to be witnesses for Talmadge and Bob's wedding. I see. And, and this Talmadge, was at what temple? Salt Lake Temple. Okay. And Talmadge, I mean, and Marion says, I can't do it. I, she'd only been through the temple, I think, once or something when they were married. She can't do what? She didn't want to be the, the witness. witness couple? And I, I says, yes, she Witness can. couple? Yes, okay. the witness couple. And she said, I can't. And... And the person that asked her said, look, you, you can have somebody there with you. And she turned, they turned to me and said, you can sit right next to her. And so Mar I said, yes, you can, Marion. I said, let's, let's do it. You can sit right, I'll sit right there by you. So I sat next to her. She was the witness couple. And then Mar uh, uh, Talmadge and, and the rest down the line. But I sat next to the witness which is us unusual. Usually the brides are next. There's no other extra, extra there. But I sat next to Marion. Well, everything went normal until the prayer circle. And at the prayer circle, they all went up there at the prayer circle, and she had to too, and so I did, and so did Talmadge and Bob and all of them. Mm -hmm. And right after she come back, and she was just shaking. Marion was. And crying. And I put my arm around her. I said, what's the matter, uh, Marion? She says, I saw Mom. She says, Beth, Mom was standing right there. And I said, Marion, I didn't see her. And she was just crying. Well, we couldn't talk very much until we got into the celestial room, and she was still crying. And she said, Beth, you don't believe me, do you? And I said, oh, yes, I do. But I said, I don't know why. You could see her, and I couldn't. I said, I think Mom would be there because Bob was her... Special. So then, time-wise, this was way after the the bountiful thing. This was after the 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 uh, the uh, uh, funeral. Oh yes. <coughs> Mom had oh, been yes. dead. Oh yes. Oh yes. Mom had been dead for what, a year or two years. You're still seeing you're still seeing uh, Mom's efforts to 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 tie loose ends. Right. To to make and and also it's like corrections. I told Marion. <coughs> I didn't really talk to her anymore about that until her and Bud separated the first time. And Bud went up to Moscow and worked and whatnot. And I phoned Marion and talked to her, and I found out they were separated, or she phoned me and told me that Bud had left or something. And uh, she said, Beth, you never did believe me, did you, when I told you that Mom was at, in that wedding, that prayer circle. And I said, yes, I did, Marion. I did believe you, but I said, I didn't know why. I didn't know why you had the privilege of seeing Mom when the rest of us didn't. But I said, I believed every word of it. She said, well, then why was she there? And I said, I know now. Because she knew that there was some problems between you and Buck. And she was willing to plead with you to be tolerant or to be, to, to be, to be giving. Because Bud was weak. He was having habits that weren't good. And I said, but that is the first one that displayed the weaknesses. Well, okay, but but I yes, but I said mom was privileged to appear to you, and I said I think it was a pleading. And that I sweet said, Marion was was working in the primary right. diligently right. and keeping a clean home. Flo and I went over there yeah. uh, uh, many many times in the evening, and I was I was amazed at what a neat little housewife she right. was. And she was gentle, careful with her little children. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Flo was the one that, that knew she was involved in, in church work in primary. And it was Bud who was the first one that stepped yeah. out. Yeah, Bud was out. But uh, 
but also I I made a trip to Boise and talked to President Johnson, who was their state president, or else her bishop. I'm not sure. He's now president in the presidency of the temple here in Boise. And I went into his office and I talked to him and I said, "Look, President Johnson," and he was counseling her then to divorce. That he was that Bud wasn't worthy of her. And I said, I said, President Johnson, that's not the right counsel. Was this in, in Utah? No, it's right here in, in Boise. In Boise, okay. Yeah. I said, President Johnson, that's not the right counsel. I said, true, Bud is weak. But I said, you, you need to work with them to get them together, not separate them. I said, they, that isn't the right thing of the church. And he says, that boy isn't worthy of that girl. How come you heard his counsel to them? his counsel to... I didn't. Well, then how could you say then to him... Oh, Marion told me. Oh, and then you later went to him. Yes, Marion okay. told me on the phone that he had gone and that they, she was going... that President Johnson had counseled her to go ahead and get a divorce. I said, Marion, you can't do that. You know, our family had never had a divorce. <clears throat> and anyway, I went over to President Johnson and I told him. I said, that's not right for you to counsel to get a divorce. I said... I said, Bud has some habits and such, but I said, you need to counsel those kids to stay together, not separate them. And I was really upset with him. I was crying, and I was really upset with him that he would counsel them to get a divorce. And he says, Marion and her sister came into the church when they were in high school, two good girls. They investigated and came in, and they've been active, and they've done this and this and this, and she's holding positions, and Bud has rebelled. And I said, I know that. But I said, she's the one that can help him come back. I said, anyway, I cried and I went out crying. He never gave me any hope. And I've had a hard feeling see, talking to President Johnson. You see, that, that position that he took is, is contrary to what, over all these years, we have learned and understood uh, from le church leadership as, as the, the, the right way of handling it when he, there's a problem with a husband and wife. And the, the, the ideal is work with them, get them together, and, maybe and, he had and the weak change. one can receive strength from the strong one. And maybe he had. I don't know that. That's the first time uh -huh. I've seen him for years. I knew him, but I didn't know him that close, and he didn't know me that close. But, but he might have worked with them, and Bud just wasn't ready to come back yet. And maybe the, Marion was covering up some things that we saw later, was a big problem in the home. And maybe mom's interference had something to do with it. And maybe that's another reason why mom was taken out of the picture, was to give them a chance. I don't know. I'm, I've added all these things yes. up. But anyway, uh, I went out of that office just heartbroken because I was in hopes I could pull them back together. And uh, and, and Michael told me, he, he says, you can try. I drove clear from Marston alone. Mm -hmm. But and he was farming, working. But uh, I felt there was no hope. Was this the same uh, state president that worked with Bud later on when Bud was uh, uh, was turning around and trying to become strong in the church again, but having severe troubles with it, with Marion? And Marion was uh, uh, didn't want Bud the new way, the church way. She wanted him the old way, like or not dad. at all. Was this the same state president I that was know. counseling, finally counseling uh, Bud? See, I don't know. To go ahead and get I don't know that. He might have been bishop when I come over. I don't know, but I thought he so was Marianne, the president. So Marion had totally rebelled against uh, the church. Well, and she wanted against Bud participating and the, the Packard church. family. Anything to do with the church. Bec and I always felt that it was because she wanted Bud to stay like he was in order to relate with her dad, who was not a member and who smoked and carried on. And you she think that was it rather than uh, uh, some sort of a rebellion against the Packard family? I think that's what made her rebel against the Packard family. We went up to that to uh, Keep in mind, camp. do you remember when we first started putting around the, uh, the newsletters, the family newsletter? And at that time, each family would write an individual letter and add it to a large uh, brown envelope and send it on then to the next designated family to receive it. They would read them all, add their letter, their own, take their own letter, old letter out, and it would go on, keep traveling in the circle. Yeah, I remember that. Do you remember it hitting dead end at least twice? 
it was restarted once, but then it hit a dead end uh, uh, again the final time, and then the idea of the newsletter kind of fell on its nose for quite some time and didn't revive until the family had reorganized again as a legal organization in 1976, no, and we had president and counselors and so on like that. I have learned later that it was Marion that stopped it. And I think that she could not handle the ongoing talk, talk, talk about each uh, set of parents, about all the grand goody things that they were doing with themselves and with their children, their yeah. family, and, and reading so much of that. Maybe she was having maybe conscience problem. I, I don't know what all was going on in her mind, but she couldn't. She couldn't I handle know. it. She I hated know. it. I know. I think she was the strength at one time. She, I know she was. And Jay was time. not. But, but, in fact, I mean, Bud, Bud was not. And when Bud finally did come around, then she rebelled against everything that, that he and, was... And there's against. the one thing that I don't yet understand, and I hope to. I would like to uh, interview Which, uh, uh, Marion. Do you think she works? I have a... a Flo and I have a a good feeling and good relationship I kinda with her. I kind of do, too. She, she do, you always think she, felt do you think she would uh, uh, accept an, uh, yeah, an interview yeah. with you and I and her? Yes. We'll try that. We will try that, then. Yes, I would like to try that because I tried so hard to put them back together. Uh -huh. She knew it. But she never really believed me when I told her that... that there I might have been be something in your initial reaction to her seeing that, made that her troubled her. I didn't she, but you might have been co quite confused as to uh, Why Mom be uh, short believe her, her, but your expression and your sound didn't show it to her. And how come I didn't get to see? In yeah. other words, her, knowing she received it, and receives then, you as, as doubting the fact that she received it. Yeah, um, as, say, as saying, well... I can't believe that she'd appear that's, to you and not right. me. That's right. Why, why wouldn't I yeah, also see I'm her? I'm her daughter. Uh -huh. see. But, but, but she, very Jay, often the Lord will work Jay, that very way. I never doubted it one bit. From the time she shook and told me, I never doubted that she saw her. And I, I didn't either, but, the, but it took quite a little while before I uh, finally understood what really happened, me that too. she actually saw Mom. Oh, but I think I didn't did. know that. Now, oh, you, you're, aware that, you're aware that Floyd, when Floyd was called to be regional representative, this was in, in the California area, he, this, uh, I think it was in the San, San uh, no, 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 the uh, Escondido, Escondido, Escondido uh, uh, State Center, that uh, they were having the meeting, and Floyd had been called, and he was uh, at the pulpit giving uh, sort of an acceptance uh, address, and his brother-in-law, down in the, in the congregation, about saw halfway, mom. quite a ways, saw Mom standing next to Floyd. Yeah. And when he, he, when the meeting was over, he was crying, went up to Floyd. Did you see her? Did you see her? Yeah. And Floyd said, see what? He says, your mother. And, and uh, Floyd says, I had a feeling, a, a special feeling, that Mom may be here, but I didn't see her. And, and he, he said, I cannot remember his name. But he's bro uh, Floyd's brother-in-law. Yeah. I saw Mr. her Earl? standing right beside you. He says, she, I saw her right there. And he pointed to the spot. See, now and I then don't Floyd, know that Floyd, uh, Floyd didn't get another verification of that fact until later when Floyd was set apart. And, and um, wait a minute. He may have been already. No, it was after. There was a, a special meeting where I, bl I believe that it was... Uh, uh, the, it's the president of the uh, Twelve Apostles, uh, that used to be our state president, Benson. As a okay. Benson, I'm almost certain that it was him, was talking to Floyd and others that were there, and it was a, it was a closed, prominent meeting, an important meeting, and he expressed the, the feeling that he was confident that... Uh, uh, parents were there. Parents were there, yes. No. I don't doubt these so, things at all. Jim. So, Floyd could have said easily, "Why, why, why wasn't I privileged to see her?" Yeah, because I'm it was the Floyd. One that's living good. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm the one that was called to this position, not you down there, halfway in the audience. Right. See. But it and is I interesting want now, isn't to it? Know that. Yes, it's interesting, and uh, I want Marion to know that. That I sincerely feel that that Mom knew that she had the strength and the ability. To help Floyd, or to help Bud. These things, as I hear them, 
um, dreams that are given to people uh, so often are a divine message, not all dreams, most of them are uh, just yeah. odd things, odd yeah. experiences but that, in the night. That had but to be. but uh, I, I don't turn uh, askance to those at all. I, but another thing, I believe Jay, those are the ways, uh, some of the ways that the Lord works with but people. But another thing, Mom's strength and her goodness, I think, have carried through so that I don't say that she was inspired to do those things, to move to Bountiful. But that's another thing that lets me know that it wasn't a pre Huber or somebody else here that really initiated it. That it was that in a plan. Might, yeah. I think it was all in some type of inspired plan that Mom had to carry through to fulfill her mission, and it took her life to do it, to finish it. Flo and I didn't realize it. <clears throat> the channel of living that we needed to be in until all of this came about. That's right. And I uh, remember you standing at that at that open casket, at Mom's casket, uh, and you tears coming down your eyes, and you promising her. Do you know? Do you know what was in my mind? Uh, there was my mother laying in front of me in a, in a box, deceased. Her life was over here on earth, and my time to correct and let her know out. was gone. Yeah. It was gone. It was spent. And I wanted her to know, in mortality, that I could control myself, and yeah. and and I felt so totally miserable, so 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 whipped, so beat, so lost at that time because I'd failed, Mom. Well, I, Mom I, was a powerful enough person. I'm not saying Dad was really; <clears throat> he was one of the best men I ever knew in my life. But Mom was powerful enough that her influence, dead or alive, uh, could could carry on this whole plan. She was privileged. Mom was privileged when to see my last weakness, my last display of weakness. Mm. And uh, and it was that, it was that single incident that brought about the final change and turn in my life. Very, very significant. I'm uh, writing it up to put it in the... Uh, the uh, family history, and I'll share it with all of you because it was it was beautiful in, in, in a in a in a in a difficult way. Mm -hmm. But it was the last time I saw mom, and another indication that of mom's extreme desire to accomplish vital things in her family with the whole with the whole family yes, and uh, it was it, it was so right that the Heavenly Father permitted her That's to right. do these things now, I, I'm certain that no one that that lives in mortality and then dies has the privilege of coming back uh, to for a for a, a divine purpose to do a good thing without, without permission. permission me too right and, and so you know mom had to have permission yes but yet she came. She came to Marion. Now, who else she's ever come to? I don't know. To Floyd. I mean, not to Floyd, but with Floyd. You see. So I definitely think. I just. I have no doubt. But what Mom knew exactly what she was doing. 